Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Witness Day. In today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at Power Over Ethernet or PoE. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand why the heck there is a need for this PoE. You have to understand there are many loads as in the electrical loads that are not very demanding. Like not everything requires as much power as a hair dryer. Basically like a, a VOIP, voice over internet protocol phones, they are very power efficient. When you are talking about routers, they barely consume 5 to 10 watts or 20 at maximum. Security cameras, uh, the old one used to consume a lot, but modern ones uh, don't consume uh, a lot. So in this sort of scenario, we have a system where you have a lot of equipment but they don't consume a lot of power. However, you still have to deal with the aspect that it needs power plus data. So whatever their data line may, may be, their phone line, their uh, ethernet cable, whatever that may be, they need that plus they need power. So they will generally have independent power system, something like a basically AC wall adapter. Consequence of that, it's very, very hassle, like a lot of hassle you have to go through. So basically, let's say you want to mount a security camera somewhere. Okay, you mounted it and you routed the data cable to from your server room to basically where your security camera is. Awesome. Everything is fine. However, you how are you going to do the basically electricity over there? Because 110 volt or 220 volt in case of uh, places that use 200 volts, it's not easy to just have a cable going there and uh, basically terminating it with a plug then putting a adapter there and then doing this very very uh, prone to mishaps and accidents because if you do a wiring electrical wiring before the building is built you can do it with uh, basically a lot of caution and uh, safety records but once you do after on like add-ons they are not very safe for this reason we want to centralize this. So basically we want to let go of power plus data. We just want one thing and we want to reduce the hassle and centralize it. Now the question becomes why the heck you want to centralize? Basically everything is happening in that central location. So you can have hundreds of security camera, but you're not going to have hundreds of control room. You're going to barely have one or two control room at max. So we centralize every anyway. So centralizing like let's say you have a VOIP phone. Not every phone you have is going to be connected to internet independently. All of them would be connected to a network. Then that network could be connected to the gateway so in those sort of scenario you are centralizing one way or the another anyway so centralizing the power also helps you a lot so this is the need you have a lot of equipment that consumes very little little power i'm talking uh, 10 15 watts or something like that but you have a lot of them and uh, running a basically ac live wire to the, uh, their location could be very uh, like tangibly uh, dangerous and a lot of hassle is involved into that so we want to get rid of this power adapters so that is why we have a need for it. So solution is some smart people came up with the idea. Let's use ethernet cable itself to carry the power. Now this is what we call PoE. This is what I'm talking about. However, you have to understand because PoE is standardized, we can make a scenario where you can have, let's say your security camera is from Sony and your uh, computer is from Samsung and your switch is from Cisco. It will work because it's standardized. So in standardized term, there are two core terms you have to understand. One, you have power sourcing equipment, PSE. Basically, this is the puppy that adds power to the network. Basically, this is the one providing the power. This is your wall adapter quote unquote and then you have powered devices basically the receiver security camera your voip things of that nature so these are the two core components you have to understand now there are many 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 standards and their naming convention will drive you crazy so i'm gonna try to simplify it now you you can see this graph and uh, i will link down the wikipedia article but in simplest term if all i have to do is simplify it to you you have to understand it this way there are 802.3 that is the standard number and on top of that that you will always hear extra things added to it like poe that's the standard number one then there is poe plus which is extra power then there is four p poe i have no idea what they named it then there is type four so you can understand this is very complicated the way the computers can handle this without you know frying uh, like you know your security camera and your routers and all that is because there is a handshake involved so do understand you can do this passively but every goods provider basically power provider power sourcing equipment and good power devices they generally do a handshake so they can make sure the power provided matches the power needed so uh, they cannot have a scenario where it uh, roast your equipment and the cable used is basically cat 3 cat 4 cat 5 and cat 6 you don't have to have cat 6 you can easily rely on cat 3 to cat 5 they use exactly the same cable exactly the same connector you don't have to change your wiring basically 
and that handshake also makes sure that let's say you have a scenario where the equipment requires uh, basically lower voltage than what you are providing the handshake will make sure that it does not roast your equipment now to give you a rough context of these things basically you have the first standard the poe the original standard it was barely capable of giving 12 watts 10 watts mm, you know maximum uh, like 10 was like every equipment was designed to make sure it works under 10 watts so there let's say phone when it's ringing it consumes a lot of power because it's running a loudspeaker so in that time it will consume upwards of 12 to 15 watts but generally they were made sure that it works under 10 you never want to be like you know maxing out to 100 percent so let's say poe just think of it as a 10 watt system then came poe plus second standard on top of that generally sometimes it's referred at uh, at standard from 802.380 don't think too much about it basically poe then came the second edition that poe plus that can deliver upwards of 25 watts of power so people can now use equipment that can consume 20 watts now this uh, allows us to take care of uh, access point routers basically then uh, the four ppoe i have no idea who is naming these things basically the bt standard type 3 standard now these can go up to 50 watt now you're talking a lot of power now that power is so much that you can do a security camera and uh, that security camera we what we call ptz camera basically you can check my last episode about that pantenzul camera so basically not only you're gonna run a security camera you have enough power that you can move the security camera around zoom in physically because those things also consume power so you can now run an active camera using this much power then the latest standard right now type 4 standard that goes up to 70 watt and at maximum uh, draw you can uh, reach upwards of 100 watt to give you a context now you can run laptops of this so these are the standard you don't have to think too much about it because there is a handshake to make sure that you don't you can't do anything stupid and there are basically you can use your normal cat 5 that's it there is this poe poe plus then random type 3 then type 4 type 4 is the most powerful one so this is how we solve the problem now then okay how we are implementing it now in implementation you have to understand let's say you are like me i have a ymax adapter at my rooftop which is just uh, receiving the signal from my internet service provider but again it's at my rooftop and it is uh, on top of a tall uh, very tall pole so i i don't want to run two cables to it now but i have to run ethernet from it to my router so ethernet is already there so what the company service provider did is they bought something known as poe so the this receiver is basically poe so all i have to do is like wherever i'm connecting my basically router my router is right here that router itself has a basically electrical uh, appliances i add what we call poe injector so basically if i am taking care of one thing we generally call it local so all you are doing is basically you are sending that ethernet wire only one wire is going to my uh, basically receiver and that's it nothing else on the ground end i have one ethernet and uh, adapter setting where i can plug in my basically normal wall watt so that's localized implementation so let's say you are only dealing with things that like you need only one then you will do localization but let's say you are talking about poe uh, basically voip you need to have centralized system because you're not going to have one phone you're going to have three four five or how many however many you need to have power over ethernet and you have to have it centralized now centralized also have other benefits let's say you centralize it this also gives you the idea that you can have uh, ups as in power backup for entire network and that can be controlled from one place that makes it very resilient to power outages and somebody accidentally slugging the cable or things of that nature and switching off cannot happen because it's now would be in server so people generally centralize things now certain things you have to centralize other things we generally employ smart switches basically your if any office that you go to generally will have poe wireless access point so they will have a router room basically the internet comes into that room there will be a big expensive firewall integrated router and then after that router the connection will go to a switch now that switch would be poe enabled switch that switch will feed power and data to a access point and that access point will be placed everywhere on the ceiling generally like you know uh, 10, 10 10 feet apart or sometimes 20 feet apart depending on the uh, capacity of the access point and how many clients are there so this is how we implement it you can have one-on-one -on -one. so basically let's say all you are dealing with is like hey i have one um, let's say wi-fi router that i have to put on top or on second floor many of you have multi-floor homes so in those sort of scenario you can th do this now you might be like okay my router is not poe enabled you don't have to worry about it. there is poe injector you can buy and from that poe injector it will be simple one plug 
you plug in your uh, dc adapter and you plug in your data then it's poe the cable becomes poe enabled and from the other end where you are receiving you can do the same basically you can extract the power and then connect in the uh, data port it won't fry anything and that uh, dc output you can connect to your router so that way you can make anything that is not poe enabled enable poe like you you can simplify the cable management now is it a good enough use that's up to you so this is how we implement it now every office uses it so is there a future into this well yes because because uh, the latest standard can support upwards of 70 watt that's a lot of power in terms of led lighting this whole room that i am in here right it's a, it's a big room uh, it's lit by 100 watt led tube lights now 100 watt is a bit too much for this room now the reason why it's not overexposing to you is because i have lower iso but for a human eye it's more than bright enough it's more than bright enough so let's say i have 50 50 watts that is more than enough for uh, normal poe systems i can easily well lit this room from one cable and control it also so you can have a scenario where you have large smart building when people leave the room the computer can detect it okay like this computer is not being used and the client has been shut down it can shut down the light also so you have one place of control LED lighting is also making it so you can get a lot of fixtures that directly support normal dumb PoE basically where you can only turn it on or off using Ethernet and there are smart PoE where you can like you know okay at 6 a.m. so turn the light in you know bit bluish uh, not bluish I'm saying bit yellowish so your people can like you know know that it's time to go home and this sort of thing can be done. On top of that point of sale basically the computer you see at mcdonald's or domino's or pizza Hut, basically is just doing one thing like basically taking your order swiping your card and that's it the whole computer can be made to run on power over ethernet i have provided uh, links down below you can see about this system this is specifically targeted for medical application where people are doing a lot of report searching and all that it can be powered over uh, directly one cable that's it no communication uh, no internet system and it provides usb power so your keyboard and mouse will work from this and you will have only one cable this is from amd the system basically the it's a aio all-in-one system so the amd system is like quad core have 16 gb of ram and it can do mild work like don't expect it to like do 4k video editing but it's made for point of sale so it is more than sufficient for what it has to do and all you have to do is take care of one cable and this whole system is now only 30 watts of power consumption and this is a another example of having a 30 watt led bulb in a server room so this sort of thing is becoming much and much more uh, prominent nowadays because of poe's higher capacity now can we expect uh, another poe standard that exceeds that 100 watt limit unlikely the reason for that is uh, cable every cable has inherent limitation so you can increase the voltage but you can't increase it voltage uh, without making it uh, like you know unsafe if you increase the voltage the cable becomes unsafe because the insulation is rated for a certain voltage i think they have maxed out and uh, they can make cable thicker but it will make it more expensive and you have to buy a new cable so right now they are uh, throwing upwards of one amp per cable like that eight cable inside you can send upwards of one amp safely you can send upwards of 50 to 60 volt safely can they increase that no i don't think so like uh, they may come up with new standard new way of uh, sending more power but as of now as i'm talking to you the 100 watt limit is like the maximum they cannot make it uh, you know more powerful unless they have to change it through let's say they physically have to redesign the connector so 100 volt is a lot of uh, basically potential uh, difference so electricity can jump electricity can directly damage the plastic insulation that is why all the home cable that you see that is only rated for 100 volt use but they will insulation will still say 1000 volted rated so for that reason i don't think we're gonna have a future we're gonna have like 10 kilowatts and over ethernet it's pointless uh, but it's more than enough because our equipment is becoming more and more efficient you can easily see a scenario where we are using your point of sale your uh, led lighting can be taken care of by poe so this is a very uh, good development that's happening right now and uh, i'm thinking that we're gonna see a lot more of poe in the future and i have provided a lot of video down below that you can see to learn more about this so this was my presentation on poe i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike i would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment now you can also leave a comment because i reply to all of them and if you really want to help me out please click the ad shown in this video that will directly help me and subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching